been a minute, hasn't it? It's been almost, what, two months? It's a long time, my bad. Whew. All right, so I'm gonna dig right into this video because I'm trying to do it while the baby is asleep and while my daughter is occupied with her dad and it's a weekend. So this is like the perfect time to get my first video postpartum out there. Um, baby is now eight weeks old. He's absolutely gorgeous. I'm super, super happy. The last time I left you guys, I was 41 weeks and I believe two days pregnant. And I was really, really just tired of being pregnant. Um, but then I ended up going into labor. If I was in 41 weeks and two days, I think I was like 40 weeks exactly that day. And I was just tired of being pregnant still. So, you know, there's that. I did go all the way to 41 weeks, three days pregnant. I went into labor on a Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. No, a Wednesday. I went into labor on a Wednesday. Um, I was having contractions, but they weren't consistent. And then they kind of slowed down. And then on Friday, no, on Thursday, they started to pick up and they were like more consistent throughout the day. They kind of eased up towards the night, but then early in the morning, they picked back up again and I was in labor all that day Friday. I ended up having him early morning Saturday, um, May 29th, I believe. If I have my days mixed up, please let me know because I probably do. Um, but if I'm not mistaken, that was a Saturday. He was born at two in the morning. I did have a water birth, so that was was awesome um we went to the birthing center around four in the evening and i labored at the birthing center doing all types of things i, I was on the birthing ball i was in the water i was out of the water i was on the bed i was on the birthing stool i was laboring in all kinds of positions it got to the point where i was just absolutely exhausted because my cervix um was open my bag had broken but a, like a tiny bit of my cervix was like caught around his head which made pushing so hard oh my god girl but it was worth it. It was. Um, my cervix, my midwife did try to, as much as she could, like move my cervix over because I was ready to push around maybe eight in the evening. Mind you, I, I got to the birthing center at four. I was ready to push by eight. Um, oh, that sounded nasty. Did y'all hear that? My swallowing sounded weird. I should drink some water. Okay, what was I saying? <laughs> um, oh my God, what was I saying? Oh, I was, <laughs> whew, I was ready to push by eight. That's what I was saying. I was ready to push by eight, but because my cervix was still stuck, I literally had, was in every position. I got to the point where my ass was hiked in the air and my midwife was, I looked like a cow. That's the best description I could give. I looked like a cow. My ass was in the air. My midwife was like elbow deep in my vagina trying to move this little bit of cervix that just would not move from around the baby's head so he could just come out. It was impossible. So what I ended up doing after a while, because my contractions were really starting to come, they were starting to slam me to the point where I could not have a break to breathe. And mind you, this is an unmedicated birthing center water birth. So I'm just like, my body is just so drained. And I was in labor for like two days. Okay. So um, I got in the water and my midwife told me to do this really weird stretch when you're in labor this long you'll try anything okay you'll do anything so even though it sounded really weird i did it what she had me do was when i was in the pool she had me laying on my stomach supporting myself by my elbows um and then she would she told me to try to basically touch my head with my feet so you know how like ballerinas, little ballerinas when they're sitting down, they can touch their heads with their feet. If you were in ballet, you know what I'm talking about. I was, so I know what I'm talking about. 
try to touch my head with my feet. And it basically stretches my abdomen to try to move my cervix. I did it twice. The first time I did it, I was in an active, con no, I was between contractions. So I just got done having a contraction and I stretched. And I stayed in that position to my next contraction. When I had my next contraction, I eased up, you know, and I kind of like relaxed my body and I dealt with my contraction. And then I went back into that pose. And then I waited till my next one. And that one I had the urge to push again. So I did. And if you've had a vaginal birth, you'll know what I'm talking about. You um, have this sensation like in your vagina, but it's not really your vagina. It's like more of like you feel it in your butt too. <laughs> it's like this weird, not really burning sensation, but it's, it's like a, that's not supposed to feel like that. Kind of sensation uh, so I, but I knew that it was probably the baby's head and my midwife was trying to see and her assistant midwife was going well do you see anything she was like I can't see I wouldn't be able to tell unless if I you know like put my hand down there I was like well put your hand down there feel touch I don't care what you do is is w am I feeling what I think I'm feeling and she's like yeah no that's the head and I continued to push and push some more until I actually felt his feeling yourself crown let me tell you something it sounds really weird if you're debating on whether or not you should have a natural birth or if you should um just go to the hospital is really based off of what you want to experience so I had my daughter at at a hospital worst experience of my life I hated my OBGYN me and him were actually arguing while I was pushing. Who wants to argue with their OB in the middle of labor? Scratch that. Who wants to argue with their OB in the middle of pushing? No one. So that was awful. Um, being induced was the worst thing that I could have ever done in my entire life. Plus, it was the worst contraction pain I've ever had. Laboring naturally against laboring induced, I would most definitely labor naturally again because laboring being induced was terrible. That was the worst feeling ever. But the fact that I was not able to actually see myself give birth and be active in my birth is really something that I just, I was mad that I had to sacrifice in my first, you know, my first baby. It was really hard for me. That's why me and my husband chose this time to do a natural birth and in feeling myself crown was one of the most amazing feelings I think I've ever experienced in my entire life because there's nothing more amazing than being able to not only feel but see yourself do the things that you're able to do and and it blew my mind <laughs> I'm not only feeling myself crowned, but when I look down, I can see myself crowning. And what I did was, because he kind of just wouldn't budge a little bit, what I did was I took my two fingers and I kind of like tried to stretch out myself, like massage myself, so that I wouldn't tear as much and kind of help him work himself out. I talked to myself while I was in labor, while I was um, pushing giving yourself positive affirmations while you're in labor and having people around you that give you positive affirmations while you're laboring or giving birth is an amazing thing. My husband was telling me constantly I was doing a great job. He was really proud of me. I'm very strong. I'm doing wonderful. Keep going. I had my... Um, midwife and her my midwife assist they were both just sitting there telling me how strong I was and look at what your body is doing and it's it's you know birthing life you're doing so great you're an amazing queen and it was my doula you guys I have the best doula <laughs> my doula did something while I was in lab was on the birth I was on a birthing ball when I first got there and a really bad contraction hit me and she was doing something to my feet and whatever she was doing to my feet. I swear that contraction was not as bad 
as it would have been if she wasn't doing it. And then also the compression thing she was doing to my back to like ease my contract. Let me tell you something, my doula was awesome. Her name is Amber Patterson. She works the um, IE area as well as the, um, like the upper valley areas, the high desert areas. I love her. When I have, when we have our next baby, oh, she's definitely gonna be my doula again. Most definitely. She was very, very, very positive. She was so helpful. I mean, my entire team, when you're giving birth, you wanna make sure your entire team is just 100% perfect. And, and my team was amazing. My midwife, Robin, she was amazing. Um, my midwife assist, Eva, she was amazing. Um, just everybody was, Amber, my doula, my husband, just everybody just made everything just, it was the most amazing feeling having all of that support. So when I was pushing, having them be there and tell me how beautiful I'm doing and you're doing great, you're you're doing awesome. Look at, that's a head and there's hair, keep going. And it was, it was awesome. It really was. When he finally came out, he kind of just like, he kind of just shot out. <laughs> I was trying to catch him. I was, I thought I was gonna catch him, but my midwife ended up catching him across the birthing pool. <laughs> he kind of just shot right out. After I got his, after I worked his head out with my, my finger, like massaging myself, he shot himself out. My midwife ended up catching him and she put him right on me and he was covered in so much vernix. Oh my God. If like I figure out how to insert photos while I'm editing, cause you know, I'm like really new to this. I don't know. I don't know how to help do this, but if not, then I'll just make it my cover for this video but he was covered in so much vernix and it was just like it was really sweet and he was just really small and it was he was really long oh my god he was 22 inches when i had him it was 207 a.m he was 22 inches long and he was seven pounds 10 ounces so he was definitely a pound bigger than my daughter. My daughter was six pounds and 13 ounces. So he was a, he was like some ounces ahead of her. So he's definitely by far my biggest baby. Um, then again, he was in there a lot longer. So, you know, there's that. But that whole experience, it was so memorable that I, I, I would much rather do that again. I would much rather have that experience again and I would much rather have that experience with that same team again and we did me and my husband did come to the very conclusion that um, when we do have our next baby Robin is definitely gonna be our midwife Amber is definitely gonna be our doula and we're probably gonna have this baby at home this time well next time we're gonna have the baby at home because um, it really wasn't anything different it was awesome if you're debating on whether you should have a home birth a water birth go to the hospital honestly what i would tell you is do it yourself you know don't you don't really don't need to go to the, unless if you really do need to go to the hospital like um Guys, I'm losing my train of thought. Give me a second. If you're choosing to go to the hospital because you have actual, like a condition like um, gestational diabetes, or if you have um, the thing that starts with an E that I know what it's called, but I can't think of it right now. So if you know what I'm talking about, please drop a comment because I'm drawing a blank. Starts with an E, but it's high blood pressure. And then, you know, any other things like complications with the baby, complications yourself, complications within labor, sometimes that does happen. But if you're if you're not experiencing any of those things, you're perfectly healthy, you're having a perfectly healthy pregnancy, I highly recommend you doing a water birth or just a birthing center birth. It doesn't even have to be a water birth. It could just be birthing center birth. 
I thought it was the best experience. Um, the only reason why I say that is because not only did I get to help myself be a part of my birth myself without having an entire medical team interrupt me or quickly do things and kind of take what I would usually want to enjoy away from me, like having that skin to skin contact, you know? not being touched right after you have your baby instead of them throwing the baby right on you over a towel you have the baby for like 10 seconds and then a nurse snatches your baby away they clean him off and and do all this other stuff to the baby and then you get the baby back and they're all wrapped up and stuff i didn't do that what i did was after they gave us baby they took did they take him did they yeah dad okay my husband took him that part i was a little foggy on because i was really like elated um but my husband took him while i delivered the placenta weirdest freaking thing ever you guys delivering my placenta that was just that was something sure was <laughs> oh never forget that one either that was weird um, but after delivering my placenta, getting up and getting out of the pool, um, they gave the baby, my husband gave the baby right back to me. They didn't really disturb me like that. I tore, I think my midwife said I had a two centimeter tear. It's really, really small. She said it was also slanted. So I think it was, I think I retore what I tore the, no, what the doctor had cut the first time when um, I had my daughter if i'm not mistaken but she said that it only needed one stitch what i decided not to, i decided not to get the stitch and decided to um heal my tear naturally so for the first two weeks i just kept my legs closed um which was really easy because my husband really didn't let me do anything like that so I kept my legs closed for the first two weeks um and then sitting down experiencing baby i rubbed all his vernix into his skin his skin really absorbed most of it but i rubbed the rest of it into his skin so he didn't get wiped off um, my husband was the one that helped weigh him if i know i'm telling you if i know how to insert pictures i really i'm gonna figure it out i got all day today because i plan on posting this tomorrow so i will figure it out i am going to figure out how it is i can put pictures in here because my husband weighed him and i do want to show you guys that and then they did his, you know, his measurements. They checked his airways. They did all the regular stuff. And then I put him in clothes and we put him in the car seat. And at four, five in the morning, we were on our way home. I had him at 207 at five in the morning. We we're on our way home. The birthing center is about 10 miles away from me. It's really not that far. It's probably not even 10 miles. Um, I know it's like a 15 minute drive away from me, but or not even that but yeah we came home i was home by five my family came over the same day to come see him it and i felt really good i mean besides the fact that i felt like all of my guts were scraped out if you had a baby you know what i'm talking about you feel like everything's gonna fall out if you like stand up and then your breathing feels really weird because your diaphragm is finally like free of being compressed for so long. You know, like you hit 36 and 38 weeks and 40 and you're like, dude, every time I say a word, I'm out of breath. Not a sentence, not a conversation. Every time I say a word, I'm out of breath. Like God. So your your diaphragm is finally free. So your lungs feel different when you're breathing. Your your abdomen feels weird. You kind of have like a weird and hard time walking and it's not because you're like disabled it's because you just like you can't you just can't get it together it's crazy postpartum is crazy after delivery jump is crazy diapers were amazing um but the entire experience itself the fact that i didn't have to stay in a hospital for three days the fact that i didn't have to have all these extra things done to me like it, it was a much better experience i'm o negative this is this is the shit that was a kicker for me when i delivered in the hospital i'm telling y'all right now i was like oh. i'm oh i'm o negative my blood type is o negative i've known this for the longest i know because the first time i ever got pregnant me and my husband we lost the baby and it was because 
we didn't know my body built up antibodies because it thought that my pregnancy was a virus and because the baby that i was carrying was the opposite blood type my body fought it off like a virus so i ended up miscarrying um and so now we know that every time you know i have a baby i have to have the rogam shot right this this is what this is what kicked it for me so with my daughter they gave me they gave me the rogam shot when i was 25 weeks 28 they gave me the rogam shot when i was 28 weeks i'll never forget that okay yeah it was 28 weeks they gave me the rogam then they gave it to me again after i had her now from my understanding especially like um especially when i was in nursing school i asked my my instructor all the time about it but what i learned was and even with my midwife afterwards what i learned was the real gam shot i didn't need it until after delivery to make sure that the next baby isn't fought off because what happened when my when i miscarried was they gave me the real gam shot because i miscarried it was technically like it's not a birth it's a loss but your body is getting rid of all pregnancy hormones the same way you would do when you have a baby you, everything is cleansing itself out basically so you get the real gam shot that way your next pregnancy you don't have to worry about your body doing the same thing and you do it every time you have a baby after you have a baby you get the real gam shot so that you don't have a problem with the next pregnancy what really got me was after i had the miscarriage they gave me the real gam shot then they gave it to me again when i was 28 weeks pregnant with her then they gave it to me again after i had her and I have a problem with that because for those of you that don't know, Rogam is a blood product. In order to make the medicine, you need the plasma of different people to make this medicine. Now, I'm not really against modern medicine, but I am against blood product medicine. I know that I need it so that I don't have an issue with my next pregnancies. I was just really irritated at the fact that they gave it to me so many times when I was pregnant with my daughter and then after I had her. And then after I had my son, I did get it again, but my midwife did explain to me that I didn't need it, but there was a 90% chance that I would miscarry when, if we got pregnant again. That's the only reason why I do get that shot. Yeah, the hospital did some weird stuff. They even pumped me full of magnesium and I didn't need it. They gave me magnesium when I was in labor. Um, they induced me, that, they induced me just based off of them inducing me, not even considering the fact that I'm a first time mom. They were like, oh yeah, okay, well, you know, you're past your due date and you're not in labor. So we're just gonna go ahead and get this thing jump started. They didn't even let me like do anything naturally. They, they didn't let me hold my baby like that after I had her they gave her to me for like 10 seconds and took her away they were pounding on her rubbing on her too hard oh it's just uh, the whole experience like, yeah I fought with doctors I fought with nurses I don't have a really calm tone and I don't really hold back anything so when I tell you I was really pissed I was pissed um so yeah no I'll never do that again I'll never have a hospital birth again that I can say for sure it's up to you. That's my point. My point. I'm all, all over the place. But my point is, it's up to you. It's up to you whether or not you want to have a baby, you know, at a birthing center, in home, or at a hospital. It's up to you. But base your choice off of what you want to experience with baby. And then also, you know, like I know there's a lot of VBACs out there. So... Find a midwife that's willing to do a VBAC because, you know, my midwife, I don't think she didn't, uh, did she do them? I don't think she did. No, she does. Does she? Yes, yeah, she does. She does because I, before I delivered my son, I remember um, in one of my appointments, she did tell me that she had a mom that did a VBAC and she did it twice. So her first baby was a cesarean and then she had two VBACs. So yeah, she does. It's very hard though to find a midwife that will do a VBAC. So do your research. 
experience it. I, I always say try something once before you knock it. You feel me? Don't just knock it and then be like, hell no, I ain't doing that. <laughs> no, for real, try it first. And then if it wasn't your cup of tea, be like, I ain't doing that shit again. And then there you go. Don't do it again. That's how I feel. That's how I felt about this one. Like, you know what? If I'm not digging the way that this goes, I ain't doing it again. But I do. I do dig it. I will be doing it again. And it's going to be just as fun as it was this time because we're going to do it at home. Also, next baby, we don't want to know the gender. So that's fun. Having a little surprise baby pops out and it's like, oh, it's a girl. Oh, it's a boy. Oh, good times. Um, But no, that's really all I have to say about my birthing experience. It really wasn't. I mean, it was intense. It was beautiful, but I didn't record it. You know, I see a lot of people that put up like birth story and my birth story vlog and I was too busy being too focused in what I was what was going on between me and my husband and growing our family that I was I'm not knocking any let me say that right now. I am not knocking anybody that does a vlog for their birth story. Like by all means do you. But me personally, I couldn't do it simply because I was too wrapped up in what I was doing with myself and with my husband. I was too focused on being in labor and I didn't want my husband recording like that because I wanted him to be focused on me. So, but we did one of um, my midwife's assists did take pictures. That's why I have pictures. I have pictures and um, after I had the baby, my husband did record a little bit. Um, but then after that, he didn't record no more. I think it was like a minute long only because he wanted to send it to his mom who by the way was here at the house which was so perfect because we were trying to figure out what we were going to do with our toddler because my aunt was in Palmdale she's an hour away from me it's not that far actually she's not really an hour if you drive I'm like a real California you can probably get to from where I am to her in like 30 minutes <laughs> honestly straight shot but driving safely she's like an hour away so we didn't know how she was gonna like do that because i you know never know how traffic is gonna be going down the 138 and sometimes it's just it makes no sense so the fact that his mom came she had already made plans to come we thought the baby was already gonna be here but the baby ended up coming when she got here so that worked out perfectly but we were so busy wrapped up in our own little world. That's why I didn't post for eight weeks. It's not because I don't love you guys. I love you. You know what? Pay attention. I see your comments and I see your likes. You know, I see my little few dislikes. You know, I'm mad for no reason. That's okay. Nobody worried. But you know, it's because I've been wrapped up. I'm back. You know, it's all right. We're good. We're happy. We got new babies. Eight weeks. I'm not gonna ditch you guys for another two months and then be like, hey, I'm back again. No, I'm, I'm gonna start being consistent with my videos. My videos, um, before I was doing them, I was doing them every week. They were coming on typically a Wednesday or a Thursday. Um, then my last one, I think I did it on a Wednesday and that's when I was 40 weeks. And then now I'm doing it on a Monday. So I know they're kind of splotchy. You never know when I'm going to post, but I'm telling you right now, my schedule is going to be, I'm going to post every Thursday and I'm typically going to do like updates of baby updates of being postpartum. Um, I'm actually going to do a full postpartum video, but first I have to get, I'm in this nursery. You guys know I always shoot in the nursery. Um, I think the next video that I'm going to post this week on Thursday, which is going to be the beginning of the schedule. This is a um, um, back update, miniature birth story update. You know, it's really all I'm going to share about my birth story because my personal opinion is don't base it off of somebody else's experience. I tried that when I was pregnant with him. I was on YouTube like water birth, water birth stories, water birth, blah, blah, home birth, unassisted birth. I was all over the place. I was trying to figure out somebody that could, excuse me, something's wrong with me. 
I was trying to figure out like like what somebody else's experiences were that way I can kind of base it off of my judgment and then I come to figure out nobody else's experience was like mine everybody's experience is different you know a lot of women labor differently than I did and a lot of women enjoyed their birth experience differently than I did and a lot of women gave birth once and was like that hurt I ain't doing that again do it for yourself so that's all I'm gonna do about the birth story but as far as everything else I know my previous videos I promised that I was gonna do baby product reviews I'm definitely gonna do that that's why I said I think I'm gonna do it in my bedroom this next video because I'm gonna do baby product reviews um because there's, there's a few things I got some comments on okay there's certain baby products out here that shouldn't be baby products okay um I'm also I also said that I was gonna do a cloth diapering journey um, videos so that's gonna be the following week so this week it's gonna be baby products next week it's gonna be cloth diapering um, updates so if you're like iffy on whether or not you want to do that and you're like I don't know maybe it'll save me some money but then again I don't feel like touching up shit so believe me I get it I get it I do but I got you sis I'll let you know what I know. I will give you the secrets of cloth diapery. It's actually pretty cool. So I'm gonna do that video next week. Um, that one I'll do in here because his his setup is over there. I haven't folded that yet, so talk. Um, and then I'll also do like little things here and there, things that I do throughout the day, little hacks um, for having a baby and a toddler having two anybody that's a mom of one right now and currently pregnant with baby number two i get it you always you sit there during your pregnancy and you're like oh my god how am i gonna be two one i get but two whew, it's really not that hard i thought it was difficult i really did overthink that it's really 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 easy it's kind of like you never stopped what you were doing you kind of just added a person to your routine is super easy so i'll also do things like that um if you have any requests on what you would like for me to talk about whether if you want me to get more in detail with my birthing experience i'll do that for you i really will if that's what you want um i'll go into more depth about that if you have any requests on certain baby products you specifically want me to review if you watched my what you call it what's it called I posted it. What is it called? You think pregnancy brain goes away after you have a baby? No, no, baby. It don't. It stays. What video is that? Baby shower haul. That's the word I'm looking for. Thank you. Baby shower haul. If you watch my baby shower haul video and you saw things like gifts for my baby shower that you specifically wanted to get or you thought about putting on your registry things like that um and you want me to review that item specifically comment let me know i got you um but a lot of things in my baby shower haul i will be reviewing absolutely um because there are a lot of things that i got from my baby shower that were absolutely amazing like game changer life saver just beautiful amazingness i'm not even joking y'all i'm being so serious also um like what you really don't need to spend a lot of money on as well so i'll also do something like that going through everything that i've um gotten and then i'll just review that for you is that it that's it that's all I have to say. Yeah, you know, we're good. This is just the I'm back, what's up? Shared a little bit of my birth story for y'all kind of video. Again, you want me to get more in depth, drop a comment. Don't forget to hit that like button and also subscribe. Um, and then hit that notification bell because I'm telling you from now on, I am your consistent chick. I promise, I promise. 
I am consistent at this point. Um, I was consistent when I was pregnant, had a baby, okay? I needed a sabbatical, but I'm back and I'm consistent. So like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Let me know what you think. I do believe in positive feedback. I believe in wonderful affirmations. I, I really do appreciate the few uh, subscribers that I did get while I was on my sabbatical and how loyal you guys have been. You guys kind of just been sitting there waiting for me to post again, so... Thank you for that and being patient. <laughs> That's really beautiful. And um, yeah, I'll be back on Thursday with an entire review of stuff. Y'all, I got you. Baby registries, do's and don'ts. That's what I'm going to call it. That's the name of my next video. Baby registries, do's and don'ts. Believe me, there's a lot of don'ts out there. They just want money. Sad. So sad. All right. Okay, my lovelies. I'll see you Thursday. Bye-bye. Where's my boy? Where's my boy? Come on, boy.